This is Aya and Shagu, two adorable clouded leopard cubs. Don't be fooled by their youthful spirit. Clouded leopards are some of the most shy, mysterious, and elusive cats. Besides their shy nature, they have a steadily declining population, making it even harder to spot them in the wild. As far as big cats go, clouded leopards are the smallest. These two little girls will top out at around three feet when fully grown. Native throughout Asia, they live in diverse habitats, from the rainforests of Indonesia to the foothills of the Himalayas. They pack a powerful bite too, as they have the largest canine teeth relative to body size of any wild cat. They have short, powerful legs and ankles that can rotate backwards, making them elite climbers. Beyond a quickly shrinking habitat, poaching remains a huge problem as their skin, claws, teeth, bones, and meat are all sold on the black market. This is the clouded leopard. This is Sade, and this is Lena, two young servals. These slender, medium-sized cats are native to sub-Saharan Africa and have a gorgeous golden coat with black spots. Servals have the longest legs of any cat relative to body size. Their ears are also impressively large and can rotate 180 degrees, giving them a keen sense of hearing, which helps them locate prey efficiently. They're long, lean, and can jump up to nine feet in the air to catch unsuspecting birds flying by. Beyond birds, they mostly feed on rodents, insects, and reptiles. Servals prefer wetlands and areas with tall grasses near water. Unfortunately, degradation of these wetlands is leaving them with less and less space, while hunting for their prized coat remains a big concern. This is the serval. This is the Speaks gazelle, the smallest of the gazelle species. Sadly, it is also one of the most endangered. They max out at around 2 feet and 40 pounds. Their biggest feature is their nose, which can puff up to the size of a tennis ball when excited. Native to the Horn of Africa, they live in semi-desert grasslands and feed on grass, herbs, shrubs, and other plants. In the 80s, they were one of the most abundant gazelle species in parts of Ethiopia and Somalia. But today, the Ethiopian population is close to extinction, while numbers in Somalia have greatly decreased. A combination of hunting, drought, and overgrazing has decimated the population. This is the Speaks Gazelle. This is Tammy and Lucho. They're Tamanduas. And this is their first date. When a Tamandua feels threatened, it will rear up on its hind legs and use its sharp, powerful claws to slash out. Sometimes it can be hard to break the ice. Tamanduas are the smaller cousin of the giant anteater. And while both species enjoy snacking on ants, Tamanduas are excellent tree climbers, while their larger relatives prefer to stay firmly on the ground. Tamanduas have excellent defense mechanisms for enemies both large and small. If a predator gets too close, the Tamandua will release a powerful, stinky spray, four times as strong as a skunk and its thick, coarse fur keeps angry ants from reaching its skin when dining at an anthill. Despite these protective adaptations, the Tamandua remains a threatened species in their native Central and South America. Habitat loss and hunting are both looming threats. This is the Tamandua. This is Zaina, a Machis tree kangaroo. She's adorable, isn't she? 
But don't let her adorableness deceive you. This rare kangaroo is extremely threatened. With curved claws and stocky muscular limbs, she's at home in the trees. However, her padded paws allow her to fall from up to 60 feet without injury. This marsupial is so rare, it can only be found in the mountainous rainforests of northeastern Papua New Guinea. It's a solitary creature that spends most of its time alone, except for when there's a baby to care for. Tree kangaroo joeys spend 18 months with their mothers before setting out on their own. Oil drilling and logging are destroying the machi's habitat, and its thick, beautiful fur has made it an attractive target for native hunters. Captive breeding and local education efforts are making headway, but its future is uncertain. This is the Machi's Tree Kangaroo. This is Wicket, a red panda. At 10 years old, Wicket is a fully grown male, with the height of just over two feet, or slightly larger than your average house cat. As cute as he is, his population has decreased dramatically, with less than 10,000 left in the wild. Red panda in name, it is not closely related to the giant panda, but actually closer to the raccoon family. He loves to eat bamboo, but won't turn down the occasional bird, insect or mammal for a snack. Native to the eastern Himalayas and southwestern China, red pandas live in trees and are nimble, agile climbers. Their reddish-brown fur and bushy tails camouflage them in their habitat from predators like snow leopards. Besides other animals, humans pose a major threat, poaching and hunting them for their fur. The forests that they live in are shrinking fast, and estimates say that their population has been cut in half in the last 20 years. This is the red panda. This is Charlotte, a prehensile tailed porcupine. With her short, thick spines, she's adorably speckled. But that cute little outfit is actually an excellent defense mechanism. Her spines rise up when threatened to give a larger and more threatening appearance. Charlotte will spend most of her life in the trees deep in the forests of Central and South America. She feeds on bark, leaves, fruits and roots. Her feet have long curved claws, making her an adept climber. While prehensile-tailed porcupines are formidable at protecting themselves, they are less successful against humans as they are hunted for food in parts of their habitat. That, along with a diminishing territory, have left their population in flux. This is the prehensile-tailed porcupine. This is Kizzy, a black and white ruffed lemur. She calls the rainforests of eastern Madagascar home, and unfortunately, home is disappearing. Black and white ruffed lemurs grow up to four feet and close to 10 pounds, making them one of the larger lemur species. Besides making for a curious look, their extra thick fur helps protect them from rainfall as water just runs off it. They are an all-female dominant social group and live mostly high in the trees where they search for fruit to eat. While they don't have many natural predators, accelerated habitat loss from logging has left them critically endangered. This is the black and white ruffed lemur. 